If I'm buying a home, I use these three ways that increase the value of my offer without having to raise the price. And if that's what's interesting to you and you wanna learn the same, we're gonna get after that right now. Hey, if this is your first time to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe and also tap that bell for notifications so you're the first to know of any changing market conditions in San Diego. I'm Dan Beer. Every single day, people just like you are making the move within San Diego County. So if you're looking to make the move in nine days, nine months, nine years even, make sure that you reach out to us and we'll help you make a smooth move. Let's cover those three ways. The first way that you can increase the value of your offer without having to raise the price, which basically means you're getting free money, right? It's a, most buyers think, hey, I gotta pay more. But if you understand the right strategies and the right technique, you can use other terms. So the first one is flexibility and timing. If you take the time, or more importantly, your agent were to take the time to understand what is the timing and any other flexibility that the, that the seller is looking for. Not every seller is looking to move in 30 days or some, some uh, buyers will even write their offer trying to show that they have a, the ability to perform. So they're trying to do the right thing and say, hey, we can close in two weeks. But you can actually scare a seller off because maybe for them that's just far too fast. So it's really important to take the time and understand what is the timing that they're looking for. Do they need less time or more time? And then be flexible around that and just other aspects of the transaction that may not actually cost you anything. For example, maybe they're really tied to a certain termite company. Maybe they're tied to a certain title or escrow company. So take the time to figure out where you can be flexible and, how, and what the ideal timing is so that it's an area in which you become the more appealing buyer, your offer stands out, but it's not price, you're not having to pay for it. The second strategy that I like to use is if you have the ability to put down a larger earnest money deposit, then I would encourage you to go well beyond what a lot of buyers will do, which is just offering 1%, even beyond the typical 3%, which is thought to be the max amount, and I'll explain that why, and this is actually why it's a smart strategy and why you're protected while doing so, and I would go and offer up a 5% or even a 6% earnest money deposit. So first off, let's cover what is the earnest money. Earnest money is that deposit that's typically uh, submitted to escrow within 72 hours of the transaction opening. So it's your good faith deposit. That's another way in which it's referenced. And that good faith deposit just says, hey, I'm here, I'm real, and I'm putting a little bit of skin in the game here so that you know that I have all the right intention to move forward in good faith with the uh, due diligence and so on. Now, the thing to recognize is in any transaction that you have not deliberately removed contingencies up front, and if you have, then this is not good advice if you have. But if you have not, which means you have contingencies, you have protections, then increasing your deposit doesn't cost you anything because should you move forward with the transaction, the deposit goes toward the purchase price. So you're really just saying, hey, I have more trust and I'm gonna show more good faith, but if I don't move forward for some reason, then guess what happens? The deposit comes right back to me. If you're the buyer, that deposit would come right back to you so long as your contingencies are in place. It would be a protected deposit. Now, most people, think of 3% as being the maximum. And the reason for that is there's a liquidated damages clause in the contract. The liquidated damages clause, without getting crazy and technical about it, essentially says that the buyer cannot lose more than 3% of the value of the property in the event that the buyer were to default or some other, you know, anything were to happen over the course of the transaction. Um, please see your your agent on that, see your attorney on that, but that's essentially what that clause says. So it's really rare that we in our business see anything bigger than a 3% deposit. If suddenly an offer comes through with a 5%, 6%, 10% deposit, well, that buyer is in really, you know, it looks really, really strong. And maybe it's an offer you're making 50,000 under the asking price. Maybe it's 100,000 under the asking price because of whatever it might be, depending on the price point, depending on how long that property has been on the market. So you can still be very aggressive on the actual price you're paying while saying, well, building in something like this, that makes your offer look more favorable despite the, the lower price. So it's a way of kind of trying to distract away from price and toward other terms. And you could even couple that with the first item I gave you, flexibility and timing, 
and now you have that much of a stronger offer without having to have the strongest price. And finally, the third element that I would just suggest to you is be easy to work with and demonstrate why they can trust you will be. So maybe you could show them how you've just moved from somewhere out of town and you're in temporary housing and it's really like you need to make the move. Maybe you could show them how you're leasing and you just got a notice. So if they go with your offer, what they know is they have surety, right? People want to be sure. People want certainty. People want to know that they're not going to get into a transaction that's going to fall apart. And oftentimes a seller will take less money for that certainty. Okay, so certainty absolutely has a value. So when you can build in certainty, you can have flexibility on timing and you can have flex, um, flexibility around any other terms. And if you increase the value of that deposit, you very well might be a buyer that is X amount of dollars under the seller's wish price or even under another buyer's number and you still might be the selected buyer. So it's a really great strategy. And if you wanna go deeper into anything like that or understand how to uh, analyze a deal with any other terms, we are here to help make real estate easy for you. I'm Dan Beer with the Beer Home Team here at eXp Realty. And let us know how we can help you make that smooth move.